down. So it sure is nice to be able to look in your faces and have you close by. Well, I'm Patricia Polacco, and I write and illustrate children's picture books. What that means is, besides the story you read that I wrote, I also drew and painted all of the pictures in the books. How many of you love to do art? For me, it's like breathing. Ooh, very good. All right, hands down. Now, you kids might be interested to know, I did not start writing children's books until I was 41 years old. <gasps> Ooh, older than dirt, isn't it? And I have been writing now for 25 years. So if any of you can do your numbers, you're going to figure out how old I am, but you don't need to tell me because I know. <laughs> In this 25 years, I've written over 77 books. They come out of me pretty fast, and I've come to the conclusion why. There's two reasons. The first reason is I come from a family of amazing storytellers. My mother's people came here from Russia and the Ukraine. People from that part of the world love to tell stories. My dad's people came here from Ireland. Show me an Irishman that can't tell a story. Ain't no such thing. And then if you've read Chicken Sunday, you probably figured out my best friend in the whole world is African American. I grew up with him and I consider his family mine. They came from the bayous of Louisiana. Who could they tell stories? So what I'm trying to say to you, you guys, my whole life, honestly, I've been used to sitting just the way you are now, listening to stories. We didn't watch them. And I think that's the second reason I ended up doing what I do. Guess what contraption wasn't in my house that you all have today that you point a clicker at to change the channel? What do you think it is? You can say it. TV. We did not own a TV. So every evening at our house, instead of watching TV, do you know what we watched? My grandmother, that's what we watched. Now let me tell you, she was better than anything I've ever seen on a TV. Every night she used to tell us fabulous stories. She called this time of telling, fire talking. She put a fire in the fireplace in the living room. She'd go in the kitchen and pop a huge bowl of popcorn. If we were lucky, she made fudge. She'd pick snow apples fresh off from the tree outside the kitchen. My brother and I'd go in with our little bowls and she'd wedge apple and put in some fudge and popcorn. And then she'd say, now go in living room. I'm going to come in and fire talk to you. And we'd go in and sit down just the way you are. She would come into that room and start to tell stories. You guys, I think I've heard every story she had over a thousand times. I do remember this. Whenever she would finish a story, my brother and I would lean into her and say, okay, that story you just told, is that a true story? She'd look at us over the top of her glasses and say, well, of course it's true. But it may not have happened. <laughs> what she was saying is profound. She was saying all stories are true, and they are. It doesn't matter if the circumstance within them ever happened or not. That doesn't matter, because the truth is the journey you're taking through that book. Did it make you laugh? Did it make you cry? Did it make you wonder about things? Did it make you seek and want justice? That's the truth of a story. Now, interestingly enough, the very first story she ever told me, you guys, is the very first book I wrote. Kids always want to know what was the first book. By golly, I'm going to show you. This is the very first book. It's about that thing up in the sky. What is that thing? Yeah. Well, but what's a more common name for those? Shoe 